So uh, today I'm going to tell you about uh, film surface expansion uh, in correlated metals with strong ferromagnetic spin fluctuations uh, based on uh, cluster extension of uh, dynamical mean field theory, a zero DMFT and uh, dynamical vertex approximation, D gamma A. So my name is Yota Arita from University of Tokyo and Riken. And uh, this work uh, was done uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Yusuke Nomura, uh, who is now in Keio University, but uh, a very big news from Japan is now he is moving to Tohoku University, uh, one of the seven uh, prestigious national universities in Japan as a full professor. So he's going to make a very big group in Sendai. Uh, so as far as I understand, uh, uh, the group of his uh, group will be very large, uh, as large as uh, 300 or 400 uh, square meters. So there will be uh, plenty spaces uh, for uh, guest researchers. So uh, if uh, you have a chance to go to Sendai. It's uh, just a 1.5 hours from Tokyo. So please visit uh, his group. And uh, Motoharu Kitatani from uh, University of Hyogo and uh, Shiro Sakai from Riken. So uh, this is a brief outline of my talk today. So today I'm going to uh, discuss uh, uh, film surface expansion in uh, correlated uh, film magnet. And uh, so first I would like to start with the uh, uh, introduction or explanation of the motivation or the background of this project. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some relevant experiment. And then I'm going to show two results. One is uh, the our calculation results for a uh, two orbital Hubble model uh, based on uh, a cross cellular DMFT. And uh, th this is a, a representative result. Uh, so this is a uh, result of the uh, uh, CDMFT calculation. And uh, uh, green line is a film surface of no interacting case. and. Uh, when the correlation is not so strong, then uh, the film surface uh, looks like uh, that of no interacting case. But when uh, uh, correlation becomes a bit stronger, uh, then uh, film surface then so expands. And uh, this uh, is uh, similar to that of a uh, film surface of free polarized state, or um, the film surface of majority spin of uh, ferromagnetic states. And uh, we found that uh, this observation, uh, this uh, behaviors uh, can be observed also in the single of the Hubble model, the simpler model, uh, by the D gamma calculations. So this is the white dust line in the film surface of no interacting case and the uh, red one is the uh, film surface of uh, obtained by D gamma A. And again, we see that the uh, film surface uh, expand. And uh, so th this, this is similar to that of a fully polarized state. So th this is the uh, take home message of my talk today. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. So in correlated metals, uh, we often uh, observe uh, the film surface reconstructions. And uh, the very famous uh, example is that in uh, cuprit. So this is a uh, uh, phase diagram in the plane of temperature and the carrier doping. And uh, there is a, a pseudo gap phase here. And uh, uh, so the, these are uh, uh, the spectral function obtained by Arpis. And uh, if you look at the uh, spectral function of the Suzuki phase, uh, we see that uh, the intensity at pi zero, zero pi, uh, it's very weak. 
And so we, we have the so-called uh, film arc spectra. And this is uh, uh, quite different uh, from that of non-interacting uh, film surface. And uh, so this uh, film arc uh, spectral function can be actually uh, obtained by uh, or studied by uh, cluster extension of dynamic and mean field theory. So uh, if we employed uh, cluster extension of the MFT, then uh, we can have a momentum dependent uh, self energy. And so here, epsilon is a uh, one body uh, dispersant. And uh, so uh, if we calculate the Green's function of a self energy of a two dimensional Hubble model, uh, then uh, uh, we can study the momentum dependence of self energy or Green's functions. And uh, so this, this is a result of the uh, 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 CDMFT calculation, and the 5% hole doping. And uh, so if you look at the imaginary part of the self energy, uh, the function of uh, uh, mass bar frequencies, and if you look at uh, the self energy, the lowest mass bar frequency, uh, we see that, uh, so when uh, the Coulomb interaction U becomes stronger, uh, then uh, imaginary sigma diverges. So th this makes uh, zeros of the Green's function in the momentum space. And uh, if we plot the Green's function, uh, the function of imaginary time, and uh, if we look at uh, tau equal half beta, then uh, we can pick up the information of film surface. And then uh, we obtain uh, so, uh, so-called uh, Fermi arc here. And uh, this is a uh, uh, corresponds to this. And uh, so th this uh, calculation is of course uh, uh, the case when the, the antiferromagnetic spin fluctuation is strong. Then the question uh, which I'm going to discuss is uh, what happens uh, uh, in the case when the ferromagnetic uh, fluctuation, spin fluctuation is strong. And uh, so uh, concerning the spectral function of the, the ferromagnets, uh, conventionally, uh, we expect that uh, the change of spectral function can be described in the, uh, the so-called Stoner theory. So uh, when the system has a ferromagnetic long range order, uh, then uh, majority spin and minority spin, the different spectral function. So this, this is majority spin and uh, this is a uh, spectral function of minority spins. And uh, between these, uh, we have uh, uh, the energy splitting. This is exchange splitting. And uh, uh, when the system experience uh, uh, from, from ferromagnetic to paramagnetic phase transition, then uh, this uh, splitting disappears and uh, we obtain this paramagnetic uh, spectral function. And uh, so uh, there are uh, many ferromagnets uh, which follows uh, 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 the spectral function can be understood in terms of the Stoner theory. So one uh, uh, typical example is uh, cobalt shandite. Uh, this is a uh, uh, the very hot ferromagnet now because uh, it shows a very large uh, anomalous transverse transport. Uh, this is anomalous world activity. So here I am showing the crystal structure of cobalt shandite. It's, uh, uh, so cobalt atoms uh, uh, make some cargo melatis. And uh, this is a band structure obtained by the standard LSDA calculation. And this is a band dispersion of uh, uh, majority spin, and this is a minority spin. And one interesting feature of this material is that uh, so we have a band crossing uh, across the film level. So th this is the so-called wire nodes. And uh, due to this uh, the existence of this wire nodes, so if we calculate the very curvature, 
then uh, around the Fermi level, it becomes large. And so uh, if we calculate the uh, anomalous wall conductivity, then uh, uh, so this is a plot of anomalous wall conductivity as a function of chemical potential. And we see that uh, it is uh, larger than 1,000 Siemens per centimeter. It's quite large values. And uh, for this material, actually, so LSDA works quite successfully. So for example, for this uh, mass of conductivity, so recently the group of uh, professors, Sokura and Iwasa, so they succeeded in uh, intercalate uh, lithium ion between uh, cobalt layers, tin layers, and they can uh, introduce many uh, carriers. And uh, they uh, measure the uh, animal solar conductivity and uh, they superpose the theoretical value here. Yeah? And uh, we see that the uh, agreement between theory and experiment, very good. So this indicates that uh, the band structure uh, obtained by LSDA uh, yeah, it, uh, it captures the uh, qualitative uh, features of the um, real materials. And indeed, uh, so APIS measurements also performed. And uh, so this is uh, uh, the comparison between the LSDA and the APIS measurement. And so, so Liu and the others, they uh, measure the uh, spectral functions as a function of temperature. And uh, so the system becomes a paramagnet uh, here. And uh, so all both uh, in the case of ferromagnet case and paramagnet case, the agreement between theory and experiments are very good. And uh, here uh, in this plot, uh, they uh, plotted uh, the size of exchange splitting, so the energy difference between the majority spin and the minority spin as a function of temperature. And we see that uh, this energy splitting disappears at TC. So for this material, uh, Stoner picture uh, explains, or uh, we can understand the spectral functions in terms of the Stoner theory. But on the other hand, uh, some materials, uh, the Stoner picture doesn't uh, uh, work well. So one example is an astrology Rosene. And uh, so, this is a, a crystal structure of strontium lucinate, and uh, this is a schematic picture of the uh, film surface of this material, uh, paramagnetic phase and uh, ferromagnetic phase. And uh, so here, uh, so they looked at uh, the energy splitting of uh, uh, majority spin and minority spins, alpha bands, uh, around here, gamma to m, yeah, around here. And uh, so they plotted uh, the, this energy splitting as a function of temperature. And simultaneously, they uh, measured the uh, magnetization, the red curves, and also uh, spin polarization at the gamma point. So th this is a, a spin resolved APIS measurement. So they can uh, look at uh, spin polarization. And uh, for spin polarization and the magnetization, uh, those, those two disappears at uh, Curie temperature. But uh, on the other hand, for the, uh, the band splitting uh, survives at TC and even above the TC. So even above TC, the system is paramagnetic, but still uh, energy splitting uh, survives. So then this behavior cannot be understood in terms of the, uh, the stoner theory. And uh, the, these behaviors are also studied uh, theoretically. And so here I'd like to introduce uh, uh, one uh, pioneering work by Andre Katanin and uh, his collaborators in 2005, so almost uh, 20 years ago. So uh, in this paper, uh, Andre and his collaborators studied uh, the two-dimensional Hubbard model uh, with a very strong uh, ferromagnetic instability. 
And uh, they studied uh, the Hubbard model by uh, the two particle self consistent uh, approximation or functional renormalization group or a world identity approach. Uh, so, so they uh, obtained the self energy and vertex collection uh, using uh, world identity. And uh, by these three uh, approaches, uh, they calculate the spectral function. And uh, so they found that, uh, so, so they studied a uh, two dimensional system. So uh, due to the Marmin Wagner theorems, uh, at finite temperature, the system doesn't have a long range order, but uh, at finite temperature, if the temperature is uh, low enough, sufficiently low, then uh, the spectral function has a two peak structure, like an exchange splitting. So although the system doesn't have a permanent long range order, the spectral function can have a two peak uh, structure. So, so th this is a schematic picture of the results. So at t equals zero, uh, so the system is ferromagnetic. So up spin and down spin as a different uh, spectral function. And uh, at finite t, so there is no long range order. So if we follow the, uh, the Stoner theory, then uh, we expect that uh, this uh, exchange splitting disappears. But uh, uh, so Andre and his collaborators found that uh, when the temperature is low enough, uh, then uh, so both up spin and down spin have the same spectral function, but uh, it has uh, two peaks, just a superposition of this uh, up spin and down spin spectral function. Uh, so, so here, so in the phase diagram, we have a quantum disorder state and a quantum critical state and a renormalized classical regime. And uh, so, he, so Andrea assumed that the, the system is the case of when, when the system is uh, far deep inside this uh, renormalized uh, classical regime. So the uh, spin correlation uh, diverges as a exponential t star over t. So in such a situation, uh, they found that the spectral function can have uh, this type of uh, behaviors. So this this is a, a result for the single band about model. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, they studied uh, this problem for a two dimensional about a model with uh, uh, next nearest neighbor hopping T prime. So when T prime is as large as 0. 0.5, and then uh, the, uh, the band of singularities uh, moves to the, the bottom of the band. And uh, in this case, uh, when the density is low enough, then uh, ferromagnetic spin fluctuation becomes very strong. So the, this problem has been studied by many people, for example, Kasten Honakamp or Andre Katanin or, and actually um, Kasten, and, Kasten Held and myself also uh, uh, interested in uh, the system. And uh, in 2006, uh, we pointed out that uh, there is a uh, uh, possibility that uh, uh, triplet superconductivity can be dominant uh, when the spin fluctuation becomes very strong. So this phase diagram was obtained by dynamic cross approximation, okay? uh, So, but so here we do not uh, go into that possibility of superconductivity, but just uh, look at the normal state. Uh, but anyway, uh, so for this system, uh, when the density is uh, uh, low, uh, the ferromagnet uh, instability uh, becomes very very strong. And uh, so this is a uh, spectral function obtained uh, by a functional renormalization group. Uh, and uh, Andre uh, does uh, discover that uh, uh, when the ferromagnet fluctuation is strong, then uh, we have a pseudo gap. And uh, so uh, double peak structure appears around the frame level. And uh, this is a result for uh, the world identity approach. So they 
consider the self-energy collection and the vertex collection. And uh, so assuming that the system is uh, far inside the renormalized you know, classical regime, and uh, also they introduce some approximation uh, that uh, assuming that the number of the transverse spins mode is uh, large. Then uh, uh, they derive a very simple expression of self-energy. And if we plug into the, this self-energy in the grid function, and uh, then uh, as we can show that the uh, spectral function is a uh, summation of a uh, uh, spectral function of a uh, uh, non interacting case uh, with a uh, minus delta energy shift plus uh, delta. So the, the, this structure. <clears throat> and uh, so these are the analysis for single band Hubble model. And uh, recently, we studied uh, this problem for two, two orbital Hubble. So in the multi-orbital systems, uh, then uh, uh, in the uh, interaction part of the Hamiltonian, the several channels, namely intra-orbital uh, Hubble U or inter-orbital Hubble U, uh, front coupling, spin flip terms, and pair hopping terms, and so on. And then, uh, so in the the presence of front coupling, uh, so the multi orbital system, uh, the phase of the so called front metal. So, front coupling uh, J as a so called Young's effect, two effects. So, one effect is that uh, so it, it reduces the size of mod gap and increases the size of uh, critical UC. And then the other effect is uh, so it Front coupling can maximize the size of local magnetic moment and uh, suppresses the coherence temperature. So th this is a very famous uh, phase diagram uh, in the plane of uh, interaction and the number of electron sites. And uh, we see that there are wide, uh, strongly correlated region away from inter integer fillings. So, uh, so it is in these questions uh, when uh, the spin, ferromagnetic the spin fluctuation is strong. So, in this uh, front metal phase, uh, how uh, the uh, spectral function looks like. So, we studied this problem by a two by two cluster DMFT calculation. So, uh, this uh, cellular DMFT calculation becomes a challenge uh, for a multi-orbital system, uh, but uh, USK uh, made a very efficient code and uh, we performed these calculations. So we studied the two dimensional square lattice and assumed that the two orbitals have the same dispersion. And the dispersion, this is the same as that studied by Andre. And uh, uh, so we do the about you, and we calculate the spectral function for paramagnetic state. Okay, so let us move on to the results. And uh, so first, uh, we look at uh, the case uh, when the density is 1.9. So uh, please note that, uh, so we have two orbitals. Uh, so uh, the half filling is at 2.0. <clears throat> so we slightly do. Uh, holes. And uh, so this is a result of uh, the cluster DMFT calculation for a two orbital system, the imaginary sigma and the real part of the self energy. And uh, this, this is a result for a single uh, one model. And uh, so the behavior is very similar. So if we, uh, if the interaction becomes stronger, uh, then the uh, imaginary sigma becomes stronger uh, around pi pi. And uh, <clears throat> so this makes uh, the zero of the Green's function around pi pi. And then, uh, so if we look at the Green's function at tau equal half beta, then uh, the, the so called Fermi arc uh, appears. So th th this, is, this is the uh, the result when the antiferromagnetic spin fluctuation is strong. And then uh, let's move on 
to the case of when does uh, ferromagnetic spin fluctuation comes to. Actually, uh, when the, the density uh, becomes lower, uh, then uh, ferromagnetic uh, fluctuation instability becomes stronger and stronger. And uh, in this situation, so if uh, we look at the uh, imaginary sigma again, and then uh, we see that uh, imaginary sigma becomes stronger and stronger at the gamma point, uh, not pi pi. And uh, in this case, so uh, this is an, uh, so uh, the Green's function at the tau equal half beta. And uh, so green line is the same surface of no interacting case. And uh, so we take uh, the ratio of uh, j over u, uh, j is from the coupling, u is a value, uh, it's a uh, one quarter. And then uh, when u is uh, like eight, uh, then uh, the film surface uh, uh, is similar to that of uh, no interacting case. But uh, when the u equal uh, 12, then obviously the film surface uh, becomes larger. And uh, so this is uh, the spectral function. So, uh, so th this is a dispersion band dispersion of uh, no interacting case. And uh, this, this is the band dispersion of a uh, fully polarized case. And uh, so we, we see that uh, the, the result of uh, serial DMFT uh, looks like uh, that of a uh, uh, fully polarized band dispersion. So it should be noted that uh, in our serial DMFT, we assume that uh, we have calculated a uh, paramagnetic case, but uh, the spectral function looks like uh, that of a uh, ferromagnetic case. And uh, this, this is a plot of uh, the change in the density uh, momentum. So th this region is uh, uh, the original, you know, uh, film surface. And uh, this, this region, so the number of electrons decreases. So in no, no interacting case, it's a free field, but uh, it, the number of electrons decreases, so it becomes almost half filling. And uh, this region, uh, the density becomes uh, increases. So the charge <laughs> moved outside uh, the, the, the film, original film surface. Original means a no interacting film surface. And uh, so, so if we calculate the spectral function uh, using the uh, self energy uh, proposed by Andre, and then uh, so we have two two peaks, so uh, which corresponds to minority spin and the majority spin. And if we compare the, these spectral functions, uh, there is a uh, similarities and the differences, and the similar. One uh, commonality is that uh, so this majority one, so it's almost uh, the same, but uh, for the the minority band, uh, in our cellular DMFT calculation, uh, the spectrum becomes very broad, and we can um, uh, see the the bands which corresponds to the minority band. And the uh, band structure is almost a uh, free field, a uh, free polarized band. Okay, so th this is what we observed for two of the model. And then uh, we studied uh, whether we can observe this behavior in a single band Hubble model. Uh, but uh, we found that uh, in the case of a single band Hubble model, uh, we didn't observe uh, the film surface expansion. Uh, but it should be noted that uh, in the case of uh, Andre's calculations, uh, so he assumed that the system is uh, far inside of the classical renormalized regime. So uh, spin correlation density is uh, diverges. But uh, in, in the, the cellular DMFT calculation, long range spatial correlation is not uh, considered. So we decided this program uh, 
uh, to, to study this problem by a dynamical uh, vertex approximation. And uh, Mazahar Tatani performed an extensive calculation uh, for a single band Hubble model and a TT prime Hubble model, the same model uh, which was studied by Andre Tatani. So this is T prime and this is density. And uh, we see that, for example, in this case, so this uh, white dashed line is a film surface of the no interaction case. And uh, so th this is the result of gigamma. So we see that the film surface expand. And uh, this uh, behaves as more visible. And uh, so th this is a, uh, 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 the peak of the spin susceptibility. And uh, so we see uh, the spectrum becomes sharper and sharper. And uh, so film surface expand. And that U equals 40. And if we compare the uh, band of this film surface or free polarized case, so agreement uh, between uh, the D gamma A and this. Uh, uh, fully polarized state. It's very good. So this is temperature dependence. And uh, so we see that at high temperature, the spectrum is broad, but at low temperature, so we, we see a clear <laughs> surface. Uh, and uh, it's almost uh, the, that of the free polarized state. And uh, so this is a U dependence. Smaller U, so in the FRG calculation by Andres, uh, they, he observed uh, the splitting, but uh, in our Nigamaya calculation, it's not so clear. But uh, for larger U, so we see an intensity around the gamma point and also here. So th this is a kind of two, two big structure. And uh, when U equal eight, uh, the film surface becomes clear. So th this is uh, the situation I think uh, Andrew is considered. So th this small surface, which corresponds to the minority spin uh, is here, and uh, the large one is here. So it it's not so clear, but uh, the situation is very similar. OK, on the other hand, uh, so so Mutaharu also performed the flex calculation. But uh, in the case of flex, uh, we didn't observe a clear uh, expansion. The spectrum is always broad. So uh, if we compare the flex and the D gamma A, we see that. So in the case of D gamma A, the spectrum is very sharp here. But uh, in the case of flex, it's broad. This is consistent with the observation of Andre. So if we neglect the vertex correction and uh, just consider the self conscious self energy, then uh, we have always have a uh, broad peak, one peak, no splitting. Okay, so this is a uh, comparison again, comparison the CDMFT and the gamma A. And uh, in that C CDMFT, so long range spatial correlation is not considered, so we didn't observe. Uh, splitting, but uh, uh, in a D gamma A, we consider long range spatial correlations and uh, we see a uh, uh, film surface expansion. Okay, so let me conclude. So we study the film surface expansion in correlated uh, metals with strong uh, thermal fluctuations. And uh, in the case of two orbital Havana model, so we have a Hunt coupling and uh, due to the Hunt uh, physics and the uh, local spin becomes larger. And in that case, uh, we observe a film surface uh, expansion. So th this film surface is uh, almost the same as that of a fully polarized state. And uh, in the case of a single band Hubble model, so uh, CDMFT doesn't observe a Film surface expansion, but uh, uh, in D gamma calculation, we observe uh, expansion of film surface. And uh, so uh, we think that uh, the long range spin correlation is very important to observe this. 
Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ryotaro. Uh, we're now open for questions. I think Karsten uh, had a question first. Yeah, thank you very much, Rio. Very nice talk. Um, I wonder, so this opening of the gap you described in Andre uh, Katanin's work and in your work, you can have it both from mod physics. So, so you, if you have a mod insulator and, and the magnetic order goes away, you could have such a splitting and also then possibly this thermal surface uh, enhancement, but, but you can also have the opening of the gap due to spin fluctuations. So, so how, yes. how, how is it in, in Andre Katanin's calculation and, and in your calculations? Uh, so, so when the uh, spin correlation diverges, uh, then uh, mm. uh, actually we can derive an expression like this. So so delta zero is the spin correlation scale and not a U or something like that in a mod insulator um, where you could uh, have similar kind of physics. Yeah, kind of exchange spreading. Mm -hmm, okay. And uh, yeah, once we obtain this, then uh, we can <laughs> obtain this spectral mm. function. Okay. And th this is, uh, yeah, I think, uh, so, yeah, although in our numerical calculation, uh, th this spectrum is always very weak and broad. And that, that is a difference between Catalan and Red's calculation and our calculation. So, uh, for example, this. So if we plug in, you use this self-energy, and then, uh, so, both the minority spin and the majority spin is a clear uh, spectrum. But in our uh, calculation, it's, this part is always broad. And also in the gamma A calculation, uh, this is uh, broad. Mm -hmm. It does not make a clear small film surface. That is the difference. But uh, we think that uh, the physics behind it is uh, uh, similar in the case of single band Hubble model. And uh, multi of the Hubble model, uh, we think that uh, front coupling J is important. And uh, although we do not uh, uh, introduce a long range spatial correlation, uh, we can have uh, this spectral function. Okay, thank so, you. Large local moment is very formation of large local moment is important in multi of the system. And uh, in the single band Hubble model, uh, so we think uh, very low, low density region, so the local spin uh, is not so large. But uh, once we consider the long range spin correlation, then uh, we can have a large uh, film size film expansion. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Antoine. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Rio. That was a very uh, stimulating talk. Uh, I think I understood the point you are making in the case of Hund uh, coupling and ferromagnetic fluctuations. Uh, so my question will be going back to the single band case where the physics is different, right? Mm -hmm. So I would like to make sure whether you agree or not on the following points. If I If I look at the single band model, say Hubbard model, but in the vicinity of half filling, not, not low density. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So as far as I know, if I look at that model in a relatively high temperature regime, let's say temperature of order half of the hopping, the physics of the expansion of the quote unquote Fermi surface, of course, this is a fuzzy notion, which is defined by the maximum of the spectral function. But this expansion is there, and it's been seen in many calculations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In single side DMFT, it's there, it's determinantal Monte Carlo. Everybody agrees on that, right? 
we agree with that, right? Now, yes, if yes. we if we ask the question, how is that evolves as we go to lower temperature? Well, of course, in that regime at lower temperature, we form a pseudo gap. And then what can happen, and this has been seen in this year calculation very clearly, is that the Fermi surface, which would be nominally, say, electron-like, because we are whole dope, would actually reshape into something which is essentially whole-like, namely the arcs, mm. uh, you know, are, are inside the antiferromagnetic brillouin zone. And so the Fermi surface is profoundly modified by the correlation effects in that regime. Mm. Right. Right. I guess, do you have T prime? But here you have T prime, right? Yes, yes. Always uh, we have T prime. Yes. Yeah, but so uh, I guess what I'm saying is that when T prime is zero, where the the Fermi surface would be nominally electron-like, it can be reshaped into hole-like, and this effect becomes weaker as you increase mm -hmm. T prime. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you talking about small T prime and uh, cross Let's, the half ring? Yes, oh. let's say even zero T prime, yes. Zero T prime and cross the half ring. Correct. And so, so what, what is your question? No, the point I'm trying to make is that at high temperature, the mm. expansion of the Fermi yeah. surface is indeed seen. Yeah. But as we go to low temperature, mm. it's even a more drastic thing mm. that the, the in cluster DMFT or DCA or mm. probably every calculations, mm. the Fermi surface can become essentially mm. whole like. Mm. So there is not only a change of, uh, there is a change of topology as compared to mm. the. Mm. 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 Uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. Mm. Yeah. The the mm. thing uh, I have another question actually on exactly on the plot panel A of your slide. I'm a little mm. confused about the following because if I look at your K momentum path, when I go from zero zero to pi zero to pi pi on the right, right, I see a very big M sigma which corresponds to the suppression of the spectral weight at the antinodes. Okay, this one. Yeah. Left. So. This divergence makes a zero of, yeah. uh, Green's function around here. So I see, but I should have... also see. Uh -huh. But if I move now from zero to pi pi on the diagonal, which is the left part of the plot, right? Yes, uh... like this. Yes, here. I should see. So you are saying the line of zero is still present behind the Fermi surface. That's the big value. Yeah. So as far as I said, this makes a zero of the Green's function. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But the thing that I find striking is that the imaginary part of sigma should be smaller than the corresponding value uh, at the anti-node, right? Because I see a, sharp, a bright node. And it's not so clear on the plot. But... Here? Yeah, here the, the spectral function, the imaginary part of sigma is expected around pi over 2, pi over 2 to be rather small. That's what I'm trying yes, to say. Yeah, yes, uh, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't see that. On make the plot the four poles, poles uh, here and the zeros here. Yeah, but so to yeah. have a pole in sigma has to be small. Mm. Uh, so you say that uh, it's not clear from... Yes, plot? that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. I would expect it to be smaller. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's... Uh, yes. Um, maybe Shiro Sakai can answer this question. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah, as no, no problem. We yeah. can discuss that offline yeah. as well. Maybe we should take... Uh... One or two other questions because time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, so in the in the, the Q and A. Q &A. Oh, go ahead. Good. Yeah. Uh, so there is a question by Waiting Ling. Can you ask the question? Uh yes. Thanks. So um, I'm just curious. Uh, so from this uh point of view of a lot of theory in the Fermi surface uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. That is the theorem. So that, that is yeah. also I'm interested in. 
Uh, mm. But yeah, so my my naive <laughs> understanding is that uh, so when uh, so when the film surface expand, yes. Uh, so uh, which one? A anyway, so uh, in this case, uh, I expect that uh, there is a Green's uh, function zero region here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that that uh, allows the system to have a larger film surface. But yeah. uh, um, but this, this is not confirmed numerically, not yet. This is the scenario <laughs> why we have a larger film surface. Okay, so uh, you mean the uh, the the particle distribution would be uh, uh, changed in the interior? Yeah, this, yeah. Around the gamma point, uh, the films, uh, the self-energy diverges. So oh. some things that happen around the gamma, gamma point. So I okay. expect that, uh, yeah. So not, not yet uh, confirmed, but I okay. expect that some things that happen uh, around the gamma point. And okay. uh, that's how the system does. So it, it, I think it's an interesting question to uh, to yeah. explore this. Okay, thank you.